Welcome mortals, I'm Dark Lord Kaiser. This is the Talos Principle. Uh, well, this is a loading screen. Oh, but it, it, the game is the Talos Principle. So, we're doing an Easter egg hunt today, children. Well, I say today. Uh, this is all pre-recorded footage, as with the last special I did around New Year's. Um, now, this particular piece of footage does not contain any Easter eggs. I've included this just to show exactly the kind of trouble I'm currently having with the Talos Principle. If you look right now at this uh, lift, you'll notice that it doesn't have some of the textures, that sort of great pattern that should be over the, uh, the front of it. And when we get to the top, and the knot gates open, if we get to the top, get, get to the top, there we are, you can see again I'm, I'm just not getting textures loading. Now Talos is really acting up currently. Well, I say that. Talos exists in two states. Either I get this, where I'm constantly getting freezers like that, textures not popping in, um, the game crashing. I mean, at uh, one point on this, I looked at a wall. It wasn't even recording. I didn't have Audacity going, didn't have Bandicam going. I looked at a wall and the game just went, no, no, I I'm done now, and completely crashed. And I had to, to reset the entire thing. Um, but the other time, other times, I'll load the game up, play for a couple of hours, because uh, I've got a lot of footage here which comes from several sessions that I've put together. But uh, for most of those ses sessions, game was perfectly fine. But it would occasionally do things like this. I'd try playing, and it just wouldn't want me to to do anything. I have some theories as to where the problems might be coming from, but. Uh, yeah, it's... well, I'll just have to hope for the best, basically. So, I am heading towards an easter egg. That's what all of this sort of preamble is is for. But, uh, again, the loading screen's taking three times as long as they should do. The, the textures, again, weren't popping in. As you'll see when we... Uh, when the thing actually loads. Because uh, you, you've seen me play these things uh, live before. Don't usually get this long a wait for, for levels to load. Come on, load up. there we go. But again, you can see textures missing all over the place. So I actually head over towards the, the first Easter egg. I know with these Easter eggs, I haven't looked up specifically what they are, but I have looked up enough to know where I'm supposed to be looking and what roughly I'm supposed to be looking for. So here you can see I'm looking for the specific level that the Easter egg I'm after is in the vicinity of. But I don't know specifically where it is, so I still have to actually do a hunt for it. But where is it? No, it's not. I think it's the next, uh, next one. But as you can see, it'll freeze, and all the textures suddenly pop in. So that freezing isn't the video. It wasn't the recording. That was the actual game that was doing that. It's just, as I said, for sometimes it just doesn't want me to play with it. So, But here we go. Now... These textures that haven't popped in actually haven't popped in for a different reason to the previous lot. And that's because, as I said, the game completely crashed around this area when I just looked at a wall. So I was looking for a hidden pathway, basically. And because the game had completely crashed, it didn't shut down properly. So when I loaded it back up, it loaded it up in safe mode. So actually some of these textures haven't popped in because it's playing in a slightly different mode to usual. Uh, this is the only clip that is the case for. Once I realised how much... So I went to another area and found that it looks so much worse than this. Because most of the textures are here uh, for this one. It's just the occasional wall is missing them. Um, so when I went to the next area, I just went, no, that's enough. Closed it down. And then the next time I loaded it up, it loaded it up properly. Um, and was, it still was playing Silly Buggers over me a little bit. But it, uh, it, at the very least, didn't look quite as bad as it has done now. So... As again, most of the, 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 um, most of the videos, yes, most of the, the clips, the videos we're going to get will be perfectly fine. I just wanted to explain briefly why it's taking me so long to get between Talos videos. Because they take a long time to edit together as well, because I'm getting glitches, because Audacity is deciding it doesn't want to play up. But yes, here's our first Easter egg. All of that to find a mirror. Which, in a way, is quite interesting in terms of why a mirror in the canon of the game would be an interesting thing to find because mirrors are a very good way you can see more glitches happening in the back there which I'm pretty sure is due to it being in safe mode so. but a mirror is an excellent way of finding out whether a creature has self-awareness or not if you put a um, 
a white dot on its cheek. If it looks in a mirror and tries to get rid of the white dot on its own cheek, it knows that it exists as an entity and that it's seeing itself in the mirror. So elephants can do that, dogs not so much, that sort of thing. Babies around three to six months start learning that ability as well. Anyway, we've moved on to the next easter egg now. Again, don't know specific, well I know roughly what I'm looking for. Um, but all I know is, well I know two facts. I know that one, it is behind a waterfall, which I remember making jokes on the first time I was in this area, but it was behind the waterfall in a different way to what I, what I expected. Uh, but I also knew I needed to jump to get there. Um, but because I don't know exactly where it is, I think the first thing I end up doing is jumping off the map to try and see if I can see it from a different angle. Which I... or maybe I fall off the map, I don't know. I think I jumped the first time, actually. Let's have a look. What are we doing? And... we Yeah, I jumped off to see if I could see behind the waterfall that way. So I have sped this uh, little section up. But as I said, I just knew it was behind a waterfall, didn't know exactly where, so there's several shots of me just jumping into the void trying to find it. I think this, yeah, I saw those little grass bits uh, and was able to jump all the way round the back of this waterfall, so I was able to figure out it's not that one. So the next few uh, jo jumps are over here. On that jump there, I'd actually caught a glimpse of what I was after. So just took me a couple of attempts to get there. I think I fail one more time. There we go. Yeah, and... Oh, I fell twice more times. But there we are. I'm now successfully going to make it around the cliff. And what do we find on the other side of the cliff? We find... It's a cage with infinite monkeys in it. Which is sort of a reference to... Um, well, the saying an infinite number of monkeys and an infinite number of typewriters would eventually rewrite the entire work to Shakespeare. But it's also the attitude the developers of the uh, virtual reality and... AI software within the game are actually working on. Keep iterating and eventually you'll find a robot that can complete the program. And then I killed my robot, just to get back to where we needed to go. So, now we're in the next bit. Okay, so this particular Easter egg, I was told on the uh, Steam forum I was looking up where these things were, that I could actually see this one by going to this location here, and switching to third person mode. And again, I knew roughly what I was looking for, but didn't know exactly what it looked like or exactly where to find it. Um, so, in a second, I will actually change. I'm, so I'm zooming in to see if I can see it that way. Oh, I should mention while we're doing this that um, one of the strange things Talos has decided to do on me recently is to lose all the key bindings for my Steam controller. So now I can't actually move the, the camera and the Steam controller anymore, so everything's switched to mouse and keyboard. So if I uh, seem a little bit unsure about what I'm doing with the, the controls, it's because I've had to suddenly switch a new control scheme. Anyway, so I did try looking in that area for the Easter egg in question, but I couldn't find it. But I did, however, know of another way of locating the Easter egg, which was to go to this little uh, section here. Freeze our explodey friend on the other side of the corridor down there. Which is actually the uh, the method to solve this particular puzzle, if you remember, we have done this one before. But instead of continuing with the puzzle, we actually use the box to break the game and jump out through one of these windows here. Now the game is aware this is a problem and doesn't let you do that. If you try and go too far, Elohim will jabber at you and kick you back to the start. Uh, but I did also note that I had literally no way of getting back to the first side, so the only way of returning is to kill myself. However, if, instead of running straight out into the desert, you hug this wall over here, you can actually get around and not be kicked back to the start. Now, I've kept this section in, though I do speed it up, hence the reason Elohim will in a minute sound like a chipmunk. Um, but I actually kept the section in because it's quite interesting, both from a, a game development standpoint and sort of an in-canon uh, standpoint, of what's going on here. So we're outside the map, technically, and all the maps are usually designed from the inside, so that the way it looks looks very specific to being inside the map, hence the reason you'll have structures from outside that won't make any sense, because from the inside they look better. And it's one of the few games I can think of in which breaking the game doesn't actually break the game. 
because the entire premise of the game is that it's a virtual reality world. So the fact that your character has jumped out is a good example of what I was talking about. From the inside, that section looks fine, but from the outside, walls were missing. It's all sorts of weird. Um, but as I was saying, because this game is set in a virtual reality world, that by breaking the sequences like that and jumping out the window, it still doesn't break the canon of the game because the virtual reality world was designed for the robot to see from the inside. So I thought that was quite interesting to, to look at the world from that perspective as well. As I said, I've sped it up, but hence the reason why I kept the whole thing in, though I have run out of things to say. But we will return to normal speed in 3, 2, 1, now. And that's because we have come across the actual Easter egg. Here it is. It is a helmet in the sand. All of that for a helmet in the sand. How exactly are I supposed to see that in third person from the area I was in, which was just over there? I'm not entirely sure, but it was easier just to find it from out here and come this way. And then I marched into the distance to kill myself, as you do to get was the only way to get back inside at this point anyway, so. There we go, back in we do. Right, so we've moved on to another section now. So again, I was I knew specific, vaguely what I was looking for, but not specifically what I was looking for. Um, and actually, the thing I quite like about this um, entire level is that the Easter eggs are hidden in the names of the levels as well. So they've got a double meaning of how to solve the puzzle and how to find the Easter eggs. This one was called Moonshot. But on the moon somewhere is something to connect this to, which again, I didn't know exactly where it was, so that's why I'm doing this little hunting. And I think this is quite possibly my favourite easter egg uh, of, of this uh, this section. And that's because once I find it... Found it, there we go. Now I was just double checking at this point that uh, the, the red laser was the one actually needed. So that's why it's taking a little time. So we connect it up. And this easter egg... Again, I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but it legitimately made me laugh out loud, which uh, is always fun. Everyone loves a good laugh. But you'll see why in just a minute. Assuming, of course, you didn't know already what this Easter egg was, which I imagine this is probably quite a famous one, so... Uh... But here we go. The moon turns around. And what's on the dark side of the moon? It's a portal reference! Aperture Science! God, I love the Portal series. First game, very short, but absolutely spot on, did exactly what it needed to do. And I love the second game, sort of expanding on that world somewhat. Um, certainly loved Wheatley as a character being introduced to it. There we are, a bit of fun music playing as well, which I decided to have a little dance along to. Now the one thing I don't like about this particular easter egg is the I think they've overdone the bloom effects on the the logo there. So there's me dancing to the music. So there are times when all it is just a, a circle in the sky, and actually you can't make out the details. I uh, personally wish they'd pulled that back just a little bit, because actually for the ne next Easter egg, it kind of gets in the way a little bit. Uh, which you'll see in just a moment, because it's going to cut over to it soon. Here we are. Man on the Moon, again, is actually a reference to what the Easter egg is. Full disclosure... I did not actually complete this easter egg. I got 90% of the way there, but I could not find the specific thing we're looking for. Uh, I'll explain when we get vaguely near the, uh, the actual easter egg itself. So the first thing the um, instruction told me to do was to go find a set of keys in this corner over here. Well, you know, it didn't say in that corner, it said in the right hand corner. And I wasn't 100% sure where it was talking about. And I also had it in my head that we were looking for those key rings that sort of hang around and, and float up. And I thought it was basically saying, okay, you need to complete the puzzle to a certain uh, degree. But actually, what it's uh, referring to, we will see in but a moment. So what you've got to do is land on that left-hand side walkway up there. But, uh, yeah, it took me a few attempts. So I luckily, I have cut most of them out. This is me trying couple of times and failing. I said, trying to get up onto that corner there. There is a bit of an art to it. You just sort of hold left and jump at just the right moment to land over here. So anyway, after a lot of attempts to get up here, I come across, what have we got? We have got this telescope. But it won't let me use it. Now if you see the, on the instructions there, it says to insert the key. 
which I hadn't got, and was very confused by for a moment. Oh Christ, I've got to send my phone to silent again. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so I did jump down, and it suddenly occurred to me that previous Easter eggs... Well, now I jump down. It occurred to me in uh, previous Easter eggs that there had been some random bollocks on the floor we'd have to find to make it work. And once I re remembered that, I actually knew how to find what I was looking for. I sort of searched around, and actually, it's not too far away from where we were. Well, well from where I landed. There it is. It's a random key on a rock just next to the thing. It's a little bit, to be honest, I think it's a little bit of busy work. Considering, well, the hard part is jumping up there. But if you jump up there like I did, didn't find the key, and didn't know where to look for it, you'd probably never be able to, you know, actually get this easter egg. So, I used the key. There's me pointing out to myself I needed the key, because I was a dumbass. And, yeah, you get a telescope. You get to look around a bit. Now, the problem is... The sky is very big, and the easter egg I'm looking for is very small. And again, at this point, I didn't know specifically what I was looking for. I had a rough idea based on what I'm looking at now, the Aperture Science logo. I'm looking into space. I'll give you the reveal. What I was looking for, it turned out, was the uh, space core from Portal 2, who is just obsessed with going into space, and spoiler alert for the end of that game, does end up going into space. Uh, and all he ever really does is just shout space, and he's really happy about being in space. That's all he wants from his life. And I have searched the sky from left to right, up, down, all over the place, could not find the damn thing. I even searched my footage, pretty much frame by frame, to see if I could, if I'd seen it and just not realised I'd seen it, and I couldn't find it, so... Yes, you'll have to search for that elsewhere, I'm afraid. Anyway, I'll just kill myself. And we'll move on to the next one. So, where, which one did I do next? Oh, the tomb, yes. I did spend a long time trying to... So I, I knew, again, I knew where this was, roughly, but not specifically. I didn't realise there was a little pathway up there. Once I found that pathway, I realised I had to complete the puzzle to a certain degree and get all of the instruments out of there, which, uh, don't worry, I'm going to cut that out now. There you go. So I've assembled all the pieces... So I run up this slope. It took me for ages to find that. Because uh, it was hidden in the dark and it was, as I said, impossible to see unless you knew to look for it. Now there's actually a secret star here, which I'm not going to uh, collect. I considered it, but I looked at the pieces I had, looked at the puzzle, and came to the conclusion that while I could complete it, it would waste a lot of time this video was going to end up being uh, long enough. So I did look around to see if I could figure out where the red laser would come from. So I think I came to the conclusion it probably came from another puzzle. But I'm not a, I, I'm not 100% sure about that. And B, I wasn't about to experiment to find out. Maybe at some point when we're playing it again properly, I'll go and complete that. I doubt it's going to be too complicated. Well, I said, I think the hard part is getting all the pieces back out of the, uh, the puzzle it's in. So I said, I decided I would just go straight for the Easter egg and deal with the secret star another time. Again, I knew roughly where to look, but didn't know specifically what I was looking for. And what I'm looking for is a hole in the ground. What's in the hole in the ground? It's a bed. That's what our robot's going to have nap time. And what do androids dream about? Well, everyone knows androids dream of electric sheep. It's a reference to a book I haven't read. And actually, I don't know the plot of that book is. I'll probably look that up at some point. Famous book. But yes, that's... Uh, it's a pleasant little one, that one. Though I was slightly disorientated to uh, reawaken on the other side of the map, which led me to the conclusion that my robot must have been sleepwalking. Which leads to the question, how the hell did it sleepwalk out of that hole in the ground? Because I have no earthly idea. So, uh, yeah, I decided I'd just leave without asking too many more questions. On to the next one. Where are we now? Right, okay, so now... Again, this random dark area of nowhere is where the easter egg is. You wouldn't think to look in that corner because it's just a dark corner, but down the corner, down the dark dark stairs, in the dark dark corner, some skeletons. No, that's a... <laughs> that's a old reference. Now, this is a bit of an interesting one because 
I'm not 100% sure what they were going for with this. I don't know whether it was supposed to be weird for the sake of weirdness sake, or whether there's some joke or reference I'm missing. But yeah, these pillars you can just walk through. And I think, yeah, I saw these that thing on the side, I thought, oh crap, my game's not loading textures again. No, it's intentional. If you look now, everything's gone silly buggers. Which actually was one of the few times where the texture's not popping in, was it a, what they had intended to happen, rather than just what my computer decided it was going to do today. And if you're walking down and suddenly... I have no idea how to interpret this easter egg. I decided at the time to interpret it as someone had given the android drugs and he was tripping balls. Which is why everything, I'm sort of swaying around, sort of getting into character a bit, because it's the whole point of the game. And then suddenly reawakening in a different place, panicking, and running off sharpish. So yeah, that was a weird corridor. So, off to the next one. Again, don't know specifically what I'm looking for. All I know is that it is underneath these palm trees. But again, I don't know exactly what it is or where it is. So I think at one point I ended up looking at the wall. Looking around on the floor, because I think it said underneath it. But wasn't 100% sure. I didn't know whether it meant underneath in a general sense or underneath specifically. So I went, well, perhaps is it on the wall, thought I? So I looked at the wall. And was like, oh, is it a shape in the... Is it a pattern of the cracks, a shape in the wall? Something to walk through, maybe? No. Looking around. Actually, it's... It's both in the open and surprisingly well hidden at the same time. So I went to back to look underneath the palm tree. And I got a glimpse of it between the leaves there. There it is. So I go around the other side. It's Pac-Man. He's absolutely adorable. Look at his little face. I jumped in joy at finding him. Look at his little mouth and his little tongue. Yeah, he's like a dog. I like dogs. I don't know why, just his, his mouth hanging out and his tongue hanging open like that just reminds me of a dog. So I was quite happy to see him. Now, here's an Easter egg we've sort of found before. This uh, entry denied. However, what I didn't know, at the time at least, and did later, was that actually it's the first part of an Easter egg. If you go back into this little area here, the other half of it is actually on this altar over here. Again, I didn't know specifically where, just that I would find an item here that would then unlock the rest of the Easter egg. And it certainly is an Easter egg worth unlocking. It's possibly one of the longer Easter eggs I've found. You know, lasting a couple of minutes rather than a couple of seconds. There it is, I found it. It's a green stamp. Which basically means I've got a green accept stamp to override the red denied stamp. So I stamp it on. Entry granted, and then I fall in a hole. Now there's a few seconds of pause here because I was trying to move and nothing was happening. I wasn't sure whether the game had frozen, whether the easter egg was loading in. But actually you can just about tell I can move, but it was so dark I couldn't tell I was moving at first. So, there we go. We're in a corridor again. And this one's marginally less trippy than the last. But it's bloody loud. Yes, it's a cinema now. Yes, there's some more developer faces. I assume they're developers. Could be anybody for all I know. But yes, they're all rather upset because the cinema, the show hasn't started yet. They've paid to come to the cinema and the projectionist is not turned up. So I decide I shall be the project projectionist. I made a mess of that word. Never mind. So yeah, so this is why it's one of the, uh, the longer ones. Crow Team Entertainment. So, what have Crow Team got in store for us now? Well, it turns out what they've got is Star Wars parody. Not a particularly complicated Star Wars parody. They just make reference to Serious Sam again. Which is literally the only other game I know Crow Team to have made. Well, the, the, the Serious Sam as a series. Not that I've ever played the thing. I'm just aware of it as a thing. Now, I like the idea of what they've done here. There are a few issues I have with the execution. So I do like the music they're playing here. Yeah, so... It's, for all I know, this could be the intro to Secret... To Serious... To Secret Sam? <laughs> to Serious Sam. It certainly is very video game intro-y. In that, it's a helicopter that immediately gets blasted out of the sky. Yeah, it explodes. It crashes. Now this, you can hear that sound effect there, that's what I don't like. 
that crying basically consists the rest of this uh, this little video. And if they'd pushed that crying a little bit later and I'd kept it about a third the length, it might have been more tolerable. But again, bearing in mind that I was watching this for the first time, it really began to get on my wick after a few seconds. I think it gets louder as well. But it's more intense. Oh no, the, the serious sound might be dead. So yeah, listen to this. They're overdoing it slightly, which given how good the voice acting usually is in this in this game, it's just a slight directorial oversight, in my opinion. But, of course, Serious Sam ain't dead. There he is. You can stop crying now, random woman. He's not dead. Look, he's not even hurt. He's just sort of there. Now, I did find it quite funny that his hand is just straight up clipping through the floor at this point. I know he's supposed to be in snow and all, but no snow is so deep that his entire arm disappears underneath it without anything else disappearing. Which I thought was quite funny. But yeah, he's fine. He's done. It's like, eh, business as usual then. These ridiculously orange sunglasses. I did for a moment get transfixed by Sirius Sam's extremely shapely buttocks. But then it all... I, I got over it. It's like, oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, those were uh, indeed things. And yeah, that's the... Uh, the entirety of the story. Everyone applauds. Show's over. I started jumping for joy again, but because where I stood you couldn't really tell, so I had to step back. Because not like my character can applaud himself. Jumping for joy is pretty much the only way of emoting in this. Sort of painting stuff on walls, but even then you've got very limited uh, interactivity. So I kind of figured the show was over at this point. For all I know, there may have been an after credit sequence, but I wasn't going to hang around and find out. So... I want it off. So I suspect that applause doesn't really end, it just keeps going. Through the fire escape, because there was no other exit. And we're back here again. That was a really abrupt uh, transition there compared to what it usually is. But yeah, I, uh, I liked that one. Mostly. Again, a few issues with the um, direction. So the other easter egg in this area is in this puzzle. But I had to solve it again, which I've just skipped through for you. And the, well, the puzzles, the Easter eggs in two parts. The first part is on top of this wall, but first person platforming in any game is. It's a bit of an art form, and it's not what this game has been designed for. This game was not designed for first person platforming, but they've stuck a load of their Easter eggs behind it. And. Like I said, I don't like that idea, but I can understand it. I understand why you'd want to put a, a little bit of a barrier between your easter eggs and the rest of the game. So, I did know I had to use this random bit of dynamite that I found on the Sphinx, but, once again, didn't know exactly what was going to happen. Uh, given the previous easter eggs, I sort of guessed it was going to open up a secret area or something like that, because, you know, that's the sort of thing this game has done so far. Now, what I didn't think is that actually, we've already had one secret area in this level, it would be a bit weird for them to put a second one in, but... Yep, so there's a little glowing place for it to go. I don't know if that was always there, or whether it only appears once you pick the dynamite up. But, flip the dynamite. And what happens? Jesus Christ, Sam, do you have to blow everything up? They made me feel bad. So I sort of walk away with my uh, head down in shame. Right, on to the next one. There we go. Behind the okay, yes, I remember this one. Again, I've got to solve the puzzle to a certain degree, so I've skipped over that for you. <laughs> there we go. So, the puzzle in this one... I say puzzle. The Easter egg in this one is actually part of, I believe, the secret star um, for the puzzle as well, because what you need to do is effectively um, escape this area with some of the puzzle pieces. Nope. I don't know what was happening here. It was put, showing me the grid lines to show I could put the uh, box down. But as soon as I tried, it just sort of fell down to the fan and, and did strange things. So in the end, I just sort of walked off the, <laughs> the fan instead. Pop it down properly. So, yeah, what I'm effectively I'm doing here is slightly breaking the sequence of the puzzle uh, and floating one box and using the other box to then jump onto the floating box. J jump on the floating box. There we go. I can then jump onto the wall. I knew I needed to take one of these boxes with me, 
wasn't 100% sure how to do that. I thought I might just be able to pick that one up that I've got over there, but it never really gets close enough, so I think I tried it at one point, and I just, just sort of jumped back onto the, uh, the box instead, which wasn't what I was trying to do. But yeah, so I wanted to pick the box up, and I was trying to figure out which one I had to take with me. Yeah, as you see, I just sort of jump across, which is not what I... <laughs> was not the plan. Go on, jump back over then. Jump back over past me. There we go. So, it turns out, if I go up here, I can actually pick up the box I was stood on, but only when it's at the peak of its uh, sort of floating oscillation there. There we are, I've got it now. So, if you remember in this level, there's actually an area where you need a fan um, to retrieve the secret star on top of the obelisk. And I suspect this is how you get those particular items. You take that fan, you take that box, and you fling yourself over. However, that's not what we're going to do. In a very specific part of here, which actually, if memory serves, I was wandering around this area um, the first time I was in this map, because I heard the whirring of the fan machine and was trying to figure out where it was coming from. But I didn't have the, uh, the items to get in there. Now also, there's a very specific area you can use the box to actually get to the fan, so I had to then move everything round to the other side of the puzzle to uh, to get there. And what do we find when... What do we find? Jump. Why did I pause here? That's so weird. I love this view of the whole map like that, though. But it fires us into a teleporter. And the teleporter takes us to a secret cave. And what do we find in the secret cave? We find... It's a prism! I was nodding in approval at this point, because I've recognised this is not merely a prism. This is actually the album artwork of one of the most famous musical albums of all time. News of the World by Queen, obviously. But actually, if we use the prism, it actually starts playing... Oh yeah, it's actually playing the songs from... Uh, the album, which I'm going to have to talk over because I do not want to get a copyright strike on my uh, channel if I can avoid it. He says, immediately pausing, so I'm going to have to sort of keep talking at this point. Unfortunately, I've never actually uh, listened all the way through David Bowie's The White Album, so I don't know exactly where this uh, comes from in it, but it's a very good song. I'm well aware that they are excellent musicians and that this uh, album was famous for a reason. So very shortly I will realise while I'm playing it that actually I don't want to hang around here too long because... Again, copyright strike, so hence the reason I have to keep talking. Hurry up, me. Please move away, because as cool as this is, I don't really want to get stuck here for too long. There we are. I figured it out. So I run off. There we go. So sh but the more possible music is still playing, so I do have to keep talking. But one thing that I did like is that the music didn't stop when I left the cave. When I jumped down here, we actually get that fantastic little guitar riff in the background. Very cool. I think I nodded approval again. There we are. But then had to, again, end the, <laughs> the the video before it kept going. So it does actually play for a little while before stopping. Where are we? Right, yes, I remember. So this is, again, in the same area, just a different uh, part of it. Now, what I need to do is get up on this little platform here. And I'm pretty sure I could get up there just by platforming in the areas that I want. Come out the back just to confirm. Yep, what we're looking for is another telescope. Oh, and I did actually stumble across the key for it as well, which, you know, again, next to the puzzle, but in a stupid place. So, again, if you didn't know you were looking for a key, you'd have no idea where to go with that. But I did actually come to the conclusion that, I, that it would take a while to get up there, and it would be simpler just to turn around, yeah, run off, and head back to the other side of the map and retrieve that block that I was using before that I got out from the... Um, Behind the iron wall puzzle. Now try putting it down on this slope, and it decided again to play silly buggers on me. And it wouldn't, uh, I tried to jump onto the platform, but the, the cube was still moving, so it just sort of slid me off. It's very specific where it wants to be put, so I ended up moving it a bit closer and trying again. Got straight over there, I've already got the key, so I can look through the telescope. And what do we find? It's the Statue of Liberty! Those damn fools. Damn you all to hell. I haven't seen the Planet of the Apes for years, so I can't remember the specific line. But uh, yes, I actually did find that Easter egg with the, the telescope. And then killed myself, obviously. 
And that, I believe, brings us to our grand finale. Yes, our grand finale. Which, again, I'd sort of partially found in the actual playthrough. There are like 10 or 11 of these pieces dot around the maps, and it was not interesting watching me collect them all. I had to, again, look at a video to find where everything was. But didn't I know exactly what I was looking for? Or how to put them together? So I was sort of having to do trial and error to get this. Because I assume this is a serious sound monster. But again, I've not played Serious Sam, so it could be a Doom monster for all I know. Uh, so I wasn't 100% sure of exactly how it was supposed to look. But it's fairly intuitive what pieces go where. So, you ram them all together. He says, not ramming them all together, because he keeps picking up the wrong bloody piece. Unfortunately, arms and legs look quite interchangeable at this point. And again, I wasn't 100% sure which bits needed to go on there, where. And it is quite specific about what pieces it will allow you to put in place when. So, for example... Now I've put a torso on, you'd think I'd be able to attach the arms. But it won't let me attach the arms until the face has been attached. And of course, if you don't know what the monster looks like, which I didn't, I assumed the face went on the very top and would go on last rather than on the front like that. But, yeah, it goes on the front, you stick on the, the arms, pick up the last piece, and drop it on the floor because I'm a moron. But yeah, I was trying to stay back so I could see the uh, full effect of whatever was about to happen. And what happens? He comes to life. Look at that. And then he takes off like Superman. While well, they play budget Superman in the background, I suppose. Or again, that could be from Serious Sam. I have no idea. But uh, now, I, again, quite fond of this as an Easter egg. Bit of a pain in the ass to get going, but the reward is kind of worth it. Now, I did assume that the Easter egg had finished when the music stops. Uh, but kept looking just in case, which is a good thing, because it turns out it was a firework all along. Look at that, he's all done an explosion on me. And then I had to dodge one of the pieces because I wasn't sure if it was going to kill me or not. But yes, that is all of the Easter eggs, well, that I'm aware of, at least from the, the, <laughs> the walkthrough I uh, was following. All of the Easter eggs from the areas we've already been to. I haven't gone into new areas, or haven't gone into areas that I haven't completed yet, because some of them would require um, puzzle pieces that I don't have. Uh, those platforms, I think, are the next thing I need to unlock. That little picture of a guy holding a skateboard above his head, I need to actually unlock that so I can do some more of the puzzles. So I think I'm... Next time I play Talos, I think that's what we're going to have to focus on doing, getting all the yellow pieces. But, there we are. Happy Easter. I do apologise that this video took as long as it did to make. I know... Uh, one fan in particular, if your fan's the right word for <laughs> anyone who watches my videos, uh, was very... Um, I, I admit that because I've taken so long to get this out, he was getting a little bit impatient, and I do apologise for that. But uh, it's here now. I hope it's everything you hoped for. I was planning to get it out actually around the Easter weekend rather than a few days afterwards. But uh, as I have stated before, I work at a theme park that I'm referring to as Not Disney. And, unfortunately, the times that the theme park is at its busiest is when the schools are closed. So, I essentially am working six days a week at the moment. Um, and when I say I work at a theme park, I'm actually uh, in the manager, manager area. Not a manager, I'm at sort of the very lowest rung of management. So I don't actually get to make any decisions, but I've got a certain amount of authority and... Um, responsibility, well, not authority, that's entirely the wrong word, a certain amount of responsibility that goes beyond the, um, the, the typical staff members. Um, and it also means that my job involves walking up and down the park all day. And the park, which I don't think I've mentioned before at the risk of giving away exactly where I work, the theme park is situated on a hill. Not at the top of the hill, literally on the face of a hill. So my days just involve walking up and down that all day. And it is absolutely exhausting. And as I said, I'm working six days a week for the, the uh, last week and this week. It does cut back down to just weekends going forward. So the video um, timing should become more frequent. But yeah, so I've just been getting home, you know, getting my food ready and all that sort of stuff. And it's eight, you know, sometimes nine o'clock before I'm ready to do anything. At which point I'm completely drained I just didn't have the energy to, you know, go hunting for all these Easter eggs and stuff. So I've had to sort of spread it out more so than usual. And editing can be such a hassle for Talos. Because, as I said, it doesn't want to play. It wants to get him away. I don't know why it's fighting me. you think it would want to be played. But it's a very temperamental little bugger. 
and Audacity has been playing silly buggers on me as well. The number of times when I've put a track together, exported it, ready to move it into my editing software, and found that my 20 minutes of audio has been reduced to 15 minutes for some reason. It's I think it's speeding up my audio, and I don't know why. So which is, uh, again, so it takes even longer to edit these videos together. So I'm going to have to figure out what's going on and figure out if I can make it stop in any way. Right, that's enough waffling on. Thank you for being patient with me on getting these videos out. The video upload schedule should increase over the next a couple of weeks. Well, now I'm back into um, not working <laughs> more than I am, were, am working. And hopefully we will get a few more Talis videos out quicker. But again, I need to figure out exactly what the problem is with the recording to try and make it work. Anyway, I'm... I'm still waffling. Okay, I'm done. Bye. Bye.